Hey guys, uh, Chris from Broken WRC. I thought I'd make a little video on the UDR. Uh, I have me one UDR here. Um, uh, it's mine, of course. <laughs> um, I just want to make a video. Uh, I had a couple of friends ask me about them and uh, just kind of wanted to kind of pretty much relay my experience on them uh, and some of the pitfalls and the good stuff and the not so good stuff, etc. Just my opinion on everything. Just relating my experience. In case you're looking to, to invest in one of these things, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't consider these like, like just something you go out and buy. They're kind of an investment. Uh, it just that that an investment that that doesn't pay out anything in the end. <laughs> you just wear it down. Uh, but yeah, um, you're gonna sink a lot of money. Um, these things are, I think, uh, price-wise, I think they're still around six hundred. I bought mine, this one, in twenty twenty-one, um, and uh, it's been, it's. I've had a ton of fun with it. It's it's a great truck. I really enjoy it. Um, like I said, I bought it in twenty twenty-one. Um, it came. It, obviously, the, the big question on these, you know, the thing about tracks is, is it's like a club, right? It costs you a grand to get in the club now. Uh, I see like X-Max, it's the same deal. It's, it's a K. You're pouring out a K. Easy. Um, and that's just for the kit. With, with this thing, it was about 600. It might be, obviously, be a little more now. Uh, but the problem is, uh, is the batteries, uh, the battery tray on this thing is, is underneath and it's a little peculiar. The battery tray cover slides on there. And the thing is with the Traxxas batteries and this, and their proprietary connectors, um, just to, you know, get it to run, you, you, Pretty much you're looking at getting a set of Traxxas batteries. At the time, they had a special where you got a charger and then two of the uh, 5,000 milliamp three cell lipos for around 200 bucks or 230, I think. And um, I went ahead and went for it. I tried uh, getting adapters and they just won't. The problem is they, they won't, just the way this thing's designed, they won't fit in the truck, you know, and try to get that cover back on is kind of a pain in the butt. So, um, obviously with Traxxas, as soon as you, uh, you know, change everything over, you're, you're, you just fell out of warranty apparently, uh, completely. So it's like, great. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I was thinking this morning, just if you pick up one of these and you want to use your own batteries, um, I would just throw like a simple three cell in there with an adapter, not put the cover on because there is a lock underneath the truck to lock in the battery uh, and just fire it up just to test the ESC. Make sure your ESC is working, you know, the radio's calibrated and everything else. Because um, obviously if that doesn't work, which has happened, I heard with these electronics, it get really f funky um, and they get some some that crap out right out of the box, uh, then you can call them up and, and get an exchange going. But uh, um, I've been running the two, uh, these two 5000s, I've been running it on six cell now for, you know, it's been a couple years. And uh, the batteries are just starting to get, you know, a little funky. I put a lot of runtime on this. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I said, the batteries are just kind of getting funky. I don't want to invest in another set of Traxxas batteries. Um, I had a problem. The problem is these connectors. <laughs> these proprietary connectors uh, are not great. Uh, the problem is that they're they're basically a blade connector, and you get a lot of dirt and stuff in there because this thing... You will, you know, at least in, in my case, it was a lot of sandy and, you know, dirt environments. You're running it in the dirt. Um, 
and it would kind of contaminate the connector and you're you're pushing that in and, in and out they tend to loosen up over time you get dirt in there and it just gets this film the uh, dean's connectors t connectors have the same problem and it's it's not so much well it is traxes i mean they're selling them with these connectors but uh uh it's kind of the nature of the beast and the nice thing about uh ec5s and uh in the other ones uh which is basically the same thing uh, I want to say, uh, ugh, my brain is, my brain hurts. Uh, anyway, the other connectors are like the old castle connectors. They're cylinders, and they tend to lock in a lot better and keep out, you, you get a better contact, I think, throughout the whole thing. Uh, the electronics in this truck have run really well. However, like I said, these things after, you know, the first 20, 25 runs, uh, these things start getting dirty. And sometimes the truck wouldn't turn on. It wouldn't get power to ESC. And I would blow it out, sit there, sandpaper, clean the contacts on this, not so much this, because this is kind of, you know, you get a, a file and there's a little dangerous. Um, yeah, so it's, it's like screwing around with those stupid connectors. Um, obviously, they have adapters that you get on eBay, and that's my next, that's my next thing, is uh, to put a like an EC5 adapter in there, and I can just, you know, plug a couple of uh, regular batteries in there or, or Spectrum or whatever, you know. EC5s are real compatible with Spectrum. It's basically the same thing. Um, yeah, and just go from there. So there's that aspect to it. Um, as far as durability, it's been very durable. Um, let's see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you off the base here and then We'll do a little show and tell. Let's take this off. Uh, <laughs> I still have the stock body. I took all the stickers off of it just to be different. And I'll probably paint it up. But this, this Ford body, I'm kind of a Ford guy anyway. But that's this seems to be the only alternative bodies out there. This is this Proline body. And these are 75 bucks a piece. So it could get kind of pricey. Um, the... I have a Mojave, and it's the same deal. In fact, to get a clear Mojave shell is over a hundred bucks. It's crazy. So it's like, I don't know. I just wish there was more body options. It did. It wouldn't. You know, I don't understand because it seemed like any racing team or desert team would love, you know, their version on this thing. Anyway, take this off. Um, I'm gonna unhook Hook you guys. So yeah. Uh how you like my stand? Nifty stand, huh? Um we're going to take this off. This thing runs great out of the box. Like I said, um as far as upgrades, what I did is I basically focused I focused my upgrades on the drivetrain. And I'll tell you why. Like the, the the plastic housings and that. This thing's six cells, so it can it can cruise up to a pretty good clip. And the plastic housings that come with the kit are fine, but what happens is they tend to plastic tends to swell to get a lot of heat. They don't dissipate heat well, and they tend to, you know, uh, expand and contract uh, with the heat. And after a while, it'll start burning up bearings and blow up gears and everything else. And um, on this truck, what I did, flip it over here. Whoops. Get you in frame. Okay. Now, this is not necessary. <laughs> uh, stock plastic, like I said, it works great. Um, I've got some miles on this thing. It's all chewed up from the sand and everything. But I've got a Vitavon rear end in here. Um, these are very pricey. <laughs> They're, you know, um, about two and a half, $250 US. Uh, however, the stock plastic axle that comes with this thing. I ran it for about two or three months and then 
uh, tore everything down to look at it. And uh, it's weird because like this planetary uh, here, this case is split down the middle, right? On a plastic case. And when I tore it apart, the whole axle was full of sand. But tip to tip. Luckily, it comes with sealed bearings so that I hadn't burned up the bearings yet. But yeah, it was like, wow, okay. <laughs> I hate to do that every three months. Um, so I thought, well, it's time to invest in a rear axle. And there, there are cheaper axles, don't get me wrong. There's cheaper axles out there on eBay and Amazon. But they still have this split planetary on it. Um, Vitavon, when they do theirs, this is all one piece right here. Then this cap goes on here. So this whole thing is captured. So you only have a couple of points where maybe dirt can get in. And like I said, they're, they're really good machinists. So uh, it's definitely worth the money. Just from a maintenance standpoint, it's like I tore this apart about two months ago. It had been, I don't know, over a, over a year, about a year and a half of running it pretty hard. Tore this apart, was bone dry all the way through. There wasn't one piece of sand, dirt, nothing. I mean, it was weird. <laughs> it, could, it almost creeped me out. The The grease was fine. Um, and I mean, I, I this is kind of like, the way this runs is, uh, this is kind of like one of my go-to trucks. If I go out crawling or something, go to the lake or, or down the block to a vacant lot, I bring this thing. Just because I could, I could pretty much slap batteries in it and go. You know, it's one of those. Um, I love my Mojave too, don't get me wrong. And, and honestly, they both come with me. Um, but the Mojave is a lot more tunable, right? So you got, and I'm kind of learning to run three diffs. This is just simple. <laughs> this is pretty simple uh, to run. Uh, you just, you know, basically, as long as you get batteries to fit and it fires up, you're out the door. Um, I did. I, I spent spent way too much. I, I did. Well, let me let me start. Let me go start over. Um, the A arms. I see a lot of guys running aluminum A arms. Like, you know, I guess that's fine. I don't know. Um, but that's what I mean. Traxxas is like this expensive club you get in and then, but the replacement chart parts are, it's, I think each A-arm assembly is about 14 bucks, <laughs> which is cheap, you know, compared to 50, 60 bucks for an aluminum. I don't know. Don't quote me on that, but, um, you know, if I blow up one of these, it's really not that much to replace. And, I run in some pretty rough country and it's it's hit it's taken a lot of hits and it's still doing just fine um, not a problem like I said I focused on the drivetrain and I, I replaced this is Vitavon 2 um, this front the front diff is I don't know if you can see that it is Vitavon and you know that was that's kind of a complicated piece of aluminum so that ended up being no, you know, about a hundred and a half, two hundred dollars. Um, which you know, like I said, I don't, I don't think you, you're not going to run into as much trouble with that, with this, honestly. I think than the rear axle. The rear axle is the one that you know, you take the most hits, or well, not the most hits, but it's it's the one that does the most work, I think. Um, other than that, uh, replace the arms. I uh, just got some hot racing arms. I, I had the the I had the upper arms stock for a long time, and then I finally bent. It's like a big piece of piano wire. It finally bent, and I just went, eh, screw it. Put some hot racing uppers and lowers on it. Uh, straps. I got. I uh, put uh, uh, the torsion bars are hot racing. Um, just because the stock ones are getting weird, especially in the front. I would find the front halfway apart all the time. So I thought, oh, I'll just upgrade to hot racing, you know. And uh, even that, <laughs> I, I just uh, stripped it out the other day. I had to put another 4 millimeter screw in there. It's not Nothing impossible, nothing crazy. You know, nothing blew up. I finally replaced the shock oil about three months ago. Um, yeah. I think I cracked the cage. I killed the cage. 
at one time and uh, put a piece of styrene in there with some E6000. You painted it up and uh, nobody could tell the difference. No, but not a big deal. Um, I don't think I even changed the drive shafts. Um, the wheels, all right, the wheels, there's, tell, there's a story with the wheels. The wheels are trio wheels, which is great. Got them off of Amazon. Um, honestly, to be to be perfectly honest with you, if I had to do it all over again, I would just stick with stock. <laughs> These stock tires are going to be your best bet, um, honestly. Uh, run them, burn them up. Um, I think I blew the hex out uh, on one on the right rear. And I just threw it up there. It comes with two spares. There you go. Not a problem. Um, I wanted to get fancy and I put trio wheels on. So um, the, a lot of other videos, and this is true, it does come with plastic hubs uh, on the UDR. So the first thing you want to do is change it out. I would highly recommend just getting the stock Traxxas. I think they're like 10 bucks. The trucks, stock Traxxas uh, metal uh, hubs. And like I said, they're, I think they're 10 bucks a set. I ended up, I couldn't get them at the time. At the time I got the truck, I couldn't get the hubs. So I ended up getting these guys. And these are the hot racing ones. And I'm not really... I'm not bagging on hot, on hot racing at all, really. Um, they ran just fine with the stock tires. However, I had to have these trails and a set of the, I think in this tire size, at least at the time, the only thing available was these Hyraxes. I have nothing against Hyrax at all. It's a great tire. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd go fancy and get a set of Hyraxes with the trail wheels uh went to put them on my heart racing hubs and they didn't fit so i had to sit there with a file and file down and count uh, every pass with a file so this thing was square um had to file it down to fit these trio wheels um anyway mounted it all up with stock foams and blew a bead immediately after each run this thing has a lot more rolling mass than you would think and uh, sure enough it was popping beads everywhere so it's like okay so I threw a bit through stock tires tires back on went to crawler innovations actually has a closed cell uh, foam for the UDR believe it or not I don't know if it's still available or not I got a set of those came in tried to mount them on the trio wheels and the inner diameter is a, has a different inner diameter on the trio wheels than the stock tire. <laughs> so, I had to take out an inch out of the inner diameter of each foam. Um, you know, sanded everything out, put everything up, and then, you know, it was, every, I mean, I don't know, you talk about screwing around. I just wanted to run some pretty wheels. That's all I wanted to do. Um, anyway, long story short, um, these are much heavier. Okay. Uh, so it's going to, it changes the physics a little bit of the truck. It changes the performance a little bit. Um, you, I wouldn't recommend running something like this with a stock servo. Uh, cause it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of weight to throw around. And, um, I had upgraded the servo to like a Traxxas 400 right out of the gate. Uh, just for that reason, uh, but to be honest with you, the stock servo does does just fine unless you're you're kind of dumb like me and you want to run these things. Um, yeah. Anyway, long story short, stick with stock. <laughs> you're gonna get more fun out of it. You know, um, looking back, you know, run what you're wrong. I finally got around to running these about a week ago. And they're cool. They're very cool. Uh, and I haven't popped any beads, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, I, I, I like closed cell foams. They're just, you set them up right, they work, 
You don't have to worry about them. There you go. So, at least on this truck, uh, they work great. Um, yeah. Let's see. What else? Uh, well, uh, maintenance. Now, I got I to gotta be real. Uh, like I said, I have this and I have a Mojave. And these are obviously much larger than a 10 scale. Um, yeah, if you don't like to wrench, I would take a serious, at least a hard look or a pass on this one. Well, for one, for one thing, performance-wise, these are not these are not meant to really jump. Um, they're not 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 in the same sense as the X Max or a Creighton or anything like that. They're they're not jumpers because there's no wheel mass. You know, the wheels aren't that big, so you can't do any real corrections. It, you kind of you launch it off of stuff, and it looks cool. Believe me. But we're talking like maybe a foot or two um, to really, you know, make it look cool. Um, but yeah, you're not going to be doing no 30 foot. I mean, I guess you can, but uh, you're going to be picking up a lot of parts. Um, this is kind of like a, I liken it to like open running. Like the scale looks are fantastic. And watching this thing go at full song is just a blast. I mean, <laughs> it really is. I dig it. That, me personally, that's what I dig is just letting this thing just go. Like you know, you're at the beach or something, and you, this thing is just those wheels are flying around, and this thing is in the body and the everything's staying level, and those wheels are just up and down and hitting bumps and stuff. Yeah, that's cool, um, and that's kind of what it's intended for. Um, you know, so in stock form. Um, they run great really out of the box and i didn't decide to put some money into it uh probably until i had it about after six months but i ran it pretty heavy um like i said i got a servo i get i i did spend 100 bucks and get us like a traxxas 400 like their their 100 dollar servo right off the bat and um meh i don't know stock is probably a little slower um you know uh, but you know you're not you're not exactly uh, uh, cutting up the curves with this thing either. Six of one half dozen of the other. Uh, it is a locked rear end, so it's gonna. Um, it is. It doesn't have a diff in it. It's, remember, it's it's a it's a locked rear end, so it's gonna operate like that. So on pavement, on dry pavement, it's gonna traction roll a lot. Um, and that's another reason to, that's the problem I have with these higher axes. They grip a little too much. Uh, you, it is okay to have a little bit of slip. And that's, these BFGs do really good with that. Um, that's why they're, they're really a cool, you know, tire for that. Because uh, uh, with the stock tires on, like on a rainy day, with the, when the pavement's wet, damn, it's game on, man. This thing, this thing really looks cool uh, flying around. Um, now maintenance, like I said, uh, there's going to come a time where you're going to have to work on this thing, and let me tell you, you got to be committed. Um, <laughs> you got to be committed. Got to have your power driver. Got to charge all your batteries. Uh, get a tasty beverage, and you're going to be in it for the long haul. Uh, this uh, not working solid, but I think this it took me a couple of days to change out the casing. On this, and then this last, I don't know, uh, about six months ago, I I had to tear down the rear, the front end again. I couldn't, there's no real instructions on this thing. It's just um, uh, parts diagrams, uh, exploded uh, views. So, yeah, like getting the shocks out. Because I, I changed the oil on the shocks. The, the rear is no problem, but the front is uh, kind of tricky. And I know there's some shortcuts. There's a... Uh, there's a YouTube channel this guy has has one of these and he races with a buddy. It's a Team 3D or Prince or something. I, I don't know the title of it, but uh, he's posted a few videos of shortcuts. You could, you know, you can find some uh, shortcuts, but honestly, a lot of it is just knowing what to take off first. This guy, this, that, and the other. Everything's integrated on this thing, so you are doing a lot of unscrewing 
in fact, I haven't even taken this, this cockpit out yet. Um, I did change the radio. I changed the, I just put a, like a, I put, I, I put my uh, spectrum receiver in this thing because I wanted to, you know, everything is, I wanted a radio that I was more familiar with. The stock radio is fine. It's, it does just great. You know, I don't, there's no range problems or anything. It works fine. Um, but, you know, my, uh, my spectrum radio is the, the one that's kind of my go-to. So I wanted to throw this in the models in that one. Um, yeah, that's, that swapped out just fine. Um, I, I don't, I can't remember if this has AVC or not. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe it does. Um, I don't see much reason for it on this because it is four wheel drive. Uh, but you know, swapped out the receiver, no sweat. Um, I know I'm going to have to get, I'm going to have to tear this all down <clears throat> or at least partial, uh, to get to, to get to the battery, that battery connector. Let's see if I can, ah, there it goes. Um, this guy comes out and like I said, if you, if you get one of these and you just want to check, check and make sure everything works, there is, there is a lockable, like you've got a lockable door here and then you can, you know, put a three cell in there and then run, uh, I need light. Uh, anyway, uh, Traxxas gives you an adapter so you can, you can kind of lock out one of these, one of these connectors. And then run a single battery with an adapter, you know. And then you can close this back up, uh, uh, lock it in place, and then at least you could test the truck. You know what I mean? Make sure everything works. Um, but yeah, like I have, I have the the I have the piece to swap this out to EC5, but I know I'm gonna have to uh open up you know this this bottom plate comes out you can get to the transmission the motor everything just fine i did that i rebuilt everything um <clears throat> and of course steering servo and everything is all accessible right down here which is you know it's not bad um the steering components kind of we're getting a little weak so we're looking at that um just a little slop in it uh, it's not a big deal. You just check it every once in a while and take out the slop. And like I said, it, parts are pretty cheap, so you might as well just replace them with stock parts. Um, yeah, that's about it. But like I said, when it comes to changing this out, I know I'm going to have to get into this upper tray, and that's going to be a lot of fun. I could tell. I'm probably going to have to take, looks like, a good chunk of this cage apart. <laughs> like I said, it's not for the weak hearted. You gotta, uh, it's, it's not impossible by any means, but yeah, you're not going to do this. You're not going to do this in the bed of your truck at the lake is all I'm saying. You know what I mean? That's why, you know, you mostly don't, I don't see these racing because, you know, if you had to pit one of these and change something out, it's mostly going to be a nightmare. I don't know. Um, just, just my opinion reason for the whole video uh compared to the mojave uh, uh mojave is great i have a video on the mojave i've got a i should watch it again and make sure i'm not i'm not totally delusional about what i said in the video but uh uh the mojave is great the mojave you know the mojave is awesome and they drive similarly <clears throat> this one has the looks down right so it's just fun to watch it's fun to drive and it's fun to watch. Um, the Mojave's fun to drive, and yeah, it's fun to watch. Um, this one too, I've got at least a couple of body options. Um, I know there's there's got to be other bodies out there. Um, and if you see anything, let me know. Uh, throw up in the comments because uh, you know um, I just get tired. You know the Mojave. Mojave's great. In fact, the body, I'm probably going to strip all the stickers off and I don't know. I'll figure out something, put some other stickers on it or something. Just to be, just to be different. That's the way I am. Um, <clears throat> Mojave runs great. Like I said, it takes a ton of abuse. Uh, also, this one doesn't, it ain't bad either. Um, 
but Mojave is significantly less. Although I got the uh, I got the roller, you know the uh, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> I got the roller, so you know I paid for electronics and motor and everything separately. So it probably works out to about the same amount of money overall. Um, like I said, this is a great truck to you know once you get the battery thing going, you just throw some batteries in it. You know, you go out crawling at the lake or in the woods or whatever with your buddies. And then it's kind of nice to just throw a couple of batteries in this thing and let her rip and just kind of goof around with it. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So I think, you know, fun factor, it's right up there. Um, I, I never regretted my decision to purchase this. But uh, what works for me may not work for you. So, um, like I said, the maintenance... The maintenance on this thing overall isn't terrible. <clears throat> you know, you take the back axle out pretty easily. Uh, but anything else, like that front end, it's you're looking at it's going to be something. Um, and I don't know, I had a hard time mounting the body over this front light bar and uh, bumper combination, which was kind of funny. I think I took, I think I took a, a little bit off of these ends just to make it so I can get the body on and off easier. I don't know why I never got the hack of it. Um, yeah. So, you know, your mileage may vary there. It's not that big of a deal, really. Uh, that forward body is so beat up. It doesn't matter anymore anyway. Um, there, there is obviously this, this, if the body attaches with these screws, these, uh, big flat headed screws. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, uh, eight. I think believe about eight screws to take the body off. Uh, like I said, you, you pick up one of these. Um, yeah, it's a good time to to invest in a power driver because um, you will go nuts otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, using a hand wrench, wrench on this thing is, is a little crazy. Just um, if you do use a power dryer, obviously you're going into plastic. So you want to turn that clutch way up. Uh, yeah, you want to uh, use that clutch. Use something with a clutch on it. It'd be just fine. Um, anyway, that's about it, guys. I've probably done yakking this thing long enough. Uh, hopefully we'll get some, maybe, maybe go out and run it today. That'd be kind of nice. Anyway, hope you guys have a good one. Thanks for watching.